chess players my name is chris torres and i have a question for you think this is kid stuff well leslie so and magnus carlson don't consider this to be child's play don't get me wrong i enjoy the botvinik variation of the semi-slav defense as much as the next guy however i have to smile when the top stars of chess duke it out from the opening popular in my scholastic chess clubs these so-called kitty openings re-emerge at the top levels every so often to remind the opening variation snobs that when push comes to shove, it's not the number of opening variations memorized that decides the game, but rather the chess that's being played at the board. In today's episode, we will examine an Italian two knights defense game between So and Carlson. The Italian Two Knights defense is most often seen in youth chess tournaments, where it regularly enters the dueling dangers of the lolly attack or fried liver attack. For this reason, Black often sidesteps these white attacks by using the 5 Knight A5 Polario defense, and that is what Magnus Carlsen chose to do as well. But beyond the fun of seeing two of the very best chess players in the world battle it out from a so-called scholastic opening, we are treated to a master class in common middle game imbalances, and then a wonderfully technical yet approachable end game. So, get comfortable, make sure you have a nice beverage on hand, and sit back and enjoy the show. Wesley So plays e4, and Magnus plays e5. Two knight f3, two knight c6, three bishop c4, and then knight f6. The two knights defense in the Italian game. And then Wesley plays four knight g5. Perhaps the most popular attacking line in all of scholastic chess. And it's easy to see why. White develops just two pieces and then uses those pieces to immediately attack the belly button. Fun stuff. Magnus plays four d5. Since he can't block white's knight, you better block their bishop. Exd5, and then 5 knight a5. Knights on the rim are usually grim, but not here as black is glad to let white have the pawn on d5 as it blocks their bishop's attack on f7. Furthermore, since white's bishop is threatened, black has given up the pawn on d5 in exchange for the initiative. Known as the Polario defense, this is how we teach the kids to defend, as playing knight takes d5 allows white to either enter the lolly attack with 6 d4, or the fried liver attack with 6 knight takes f7. In fact, let's take a moment to look at both of those options. So if black plays 5 knight takes d5, white can simply play 6 knight takes f7. And we have a fried liver attack. The knight is forking the queen and rook, so the king must take. And now the knight on d5 is the new target as it is pinned and exposed. Queen to f3, check. Attacking both the new target on d5 and the king on f7. King goes to e6. Now black has two defenders to match white's two attackers. So white adds a third attacker with eight knights e3. And then 8 knight to d4. In this game, one between Paul Morphy and his father Alonzo, Alonzo abandoned his knight on d5 in favor of creating some big threats. Bishop takes d5, check. But white gets to capture with check, and the rest is history. King d6, 10 queen f7, threatening a nifty checkmate with knight to e4. 10 bishop e6, making it so that knight e4 is no longer a checkmate, and forking the bishop on d5 and queen on f7. Bishop takes e6, knight takes e6, knight e4, check, king d5, Paul Morphy throws the whole kitchen sink at his father, pawn to c4, check, king takes e4, queen takes e6, 14 queen d4. Actually, this is a mistake because the black queen takes away an important escape square, from her own king. 
Queen to g4 check, king d3, queen e2, king to c2, and then d3, discovered, check, checkmate. That's the attacking line from the fried liver that Paul Morphy used to defeat his father, Alonzo Morphy, in 1850. Although in that game, Paul Morphy played at Rook's Odds, and therefore the game finished spectacularly with 17, king takes c1, and then 18, castle, checkmate. And now let's quickly look at the lolly option. So after white plays uh, 5 ex d5 um, and black plays 5 knight takes d5, white can play 6 to d4. So instead of sacking the knight immediately on f7, white can play 6 d4. The lolly attack is similar to the fried liver attack, but with a couple added bonuses, such as occupying the center and opening the diagonal for the bishop on c1. 6 ex d4. Black's most common response is to capture the pawn that white offered. 7 castle. But it was a gambit, and now white has the dangerous fried liver style attack with the benefit of being castled. 7 bishop e7. 8 knight takes f7. Play continues similarly to that in the fried liver. King takes f7. Queen f3 check. King e6. 10 knights e3, and we even add the third attacker to d5 in the same fashion as the fried liver, but with lolly s tactical motifs. 10 dx e3, and then 11 rook to e1 check, knight e5, 12 bishop f4. Both of black's knights are pinned, exposed, and threatened twice. 12 bishop f6, black adds a second defender, but Morphy will force a win with an outstanding tactical flourish. Bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, rook takes e5 check, king takes e5, there comes the second rook, rook e1 check, king to d4, bishop takes d5, rook e8, queen to d3 check, king c5, b4 check, king takes b4, queen to d4 check, King a5, queen takes c3 check, king a4, queen to b3 check, king a5, queen to a3 check, king b6, and rook b1, checkmate. And that's how Morphy used the lolly attack to great effect against an unnamed adversary in 1858. So there's a little bit about the fried liver and the lolly from one of my favorite players, Paul Morphy. I suspect at a later time I'll add a full episode lesson for both of those games, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what happens if black does play. 5, knight takes d5. But in the game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen, Magnus Carlsen made the wise choice and played knight to a5. Knights on the rim are usually grim, but not here as black is glad to let white have the pawn on d5 as it blocks their bishop's attack on f7. Furthermore, since white's bishop is threatened, black has given up the pawn on d5 in exchange for the initiative. 6 bishop b5. Before retreating, white checks to damage black's queenside pawn structure. Magnus plays 6 c6, and now we see how black's knight is actually perfectly placed on the rim. 7dxc6, bxc6, black's a and c pawn are now isolated, but white will likely retreat because the knight on a5 is defending c6. Wesley So plays 8 bishop to d3. Bishop e2 is the traditional move, although Hikaru Nakamura played the bishop to d3 retreat in his final game of the 2009 U.S. Chess Championship. More on this in a bit. However, it is worth noting that an alternative to retreating the bishop is to play queen f3. And in that case, the pawn on c6 is actually pinned in two directions. So black can play rook b8, stepping the rook out of the pin. Here white has a lot of different bishop moves to think about. But before I digress too far, let's get back to our main game. So Wesley So played 8 bishop d3. And Magnus Carlsen played 8, knight to d5. And here, let's take a quick look at that aforementioned Nakamura game, where Joshua Friedel, instead of playing 8, knight d5, 
Joshua played eight bishop e7, and Hikaru played knight c3. Castle, castle, rook b8, h3, c5, b3, rook b4, rook e1, bishop e7, bishop a3, rook f4, 15 g3, rook d4, 16 knight f3, rook takes d3, cx d3, queen takes d3, 18 knight takes e5, queen f5, 19 g4, queen f4, 20 d4, rook d8, queen e2, rook takes d4, and 22 bishop c1. And black resigned in Hikaru Nakamura versus Joshua Friedel, as his queen is trapped and he cannot avoid losing mega material by force. In winning this game, Hikaru Nakamura was crowned the sole winner of the 2009 U.S. Chess Championship. This is another game that I should probably go and dedicate an entire lesson to. But I just wanted to add it quickly here, as it gives some important historical context into the move. 8, Bishop D3. So, back to our main game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. Again... Wesley played 8, bishop, d3. Magnus played 8, knight, d5. And then Wesley plays 9, knight, f3. And bishop, d6. Black certainly has compensation in terms of space and development in exchange for the pawn. 10, white castles. Move 10, black castles. 11, rook, e1. F5. Certainly moves like bishop g4 and rook e8 are possibilities for black here. For instance, if 11 bishop g4, then white could play h3, um, bishop h5, 13 bishop f5, allowing for bishop g4 to break the pin. For instance, if 13 bishop c7, 14 bishop g4, bishop takes g4, hx g4. And that's why I prefer 11 rook e8, because playing 11 rook e8, white can play a 12 knight c3, knight b4, threatening to exchange the knight for the bishop on d3, removing one of white's key pieces and giving white double isolated pawns after the recapture. 13 bishop f1, so white should retreat the bishop. And then 13 bishop g4. And now black can pin the knight without white's light squared bishop interfering. But back to our main game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. Magnus has just played 11 f5. And Wesley responds with 12 knight takes e5. White captures black center pawn, but it takes two tempi. 12 queen f6 because after black develops the queen with a threat to the knight white must retreat back as pawn to d4 is unplayable and pawn to f4 won't work with black's knight on d5 so 13 knight f3 and magnus carlson plays 13 g5 Yes, it's risky to storm forward with the pawns protecting your castled king. However, here white is underdeveloped and no threat. So by Magnus playing g5, he keeps the attack going with the threat of playing pawn to g4. 14 c4. So Wesley so attacks white's knight with a pawn before his adversary can do the same with the pawn to g4. 14 knight f4. Magnus responds by moving the threatened knight closer to white's king while also threatening the undefended bishop on d3. 15 bishop f1. Wesley So would love to play pawn to d4, but first must save his bishop. 15 g4. And Magnus Carlsen doesn't waste any time returning to his plan of moving the pawn ahead to g4 and threatening white's knight. 16 d4. With his knight trapped on f3, Wesley So plays the strong d4 and will now be able to develop his remaining pieces with ease. And remember, white was ahead in material, so Wesley is simply giving some material back to catch up on development. 16 gx f3, 17 queen takes f3, and now material is actually even again. 1796, and all this follows a 2020 chess.com game between Wesley So and Abdusatarov. 17 QXD4 is interesting, but probably too greedy. For instance, play might continue. 18 Rook D1 
knight h3 check, 19 gx h3, queen e5, 20 queen g3 check, king f7, 21 queen takes e5, bishop takes e5, 22 knight d2, rook g8 check, king h1, bishop e6, rook b1, rook a to d8, 25 rook e1, bishop d4, 26 knight f3, bishop takes c4, 27 bishop takes c4 check, knight takes c4, 28 bishop g5, unifying the rooks is better than the knight check on g5, 28 bishop f6, 29 b3, bishop takes g5, 30 bx c4, and it's actually white who ends up ahead material, not black. But that's just a possible variation after 17 queen x d4. Let's return to our actual game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen played 17 knight e6, 18 queen c3. Interesting that Wesley So chooses queen c3 over c5 as 18 c5, knight takes d4, 19 queen c3, bishop c7, 20 b4, knight b7, 21 bishop c4 check, king g7, 22 bishop b2, rook d8, 23 knight d2, a5, 24 knight b3, ax b4, 25 queen x d4, rook takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, 27, knight takes d4, king f6, 28, knight takes c6, knight takes c5, 29, knight takes b4. And white won in Wesley So versus Naderbek Abdusitarov in the 2020 Chess.com Speed Chess Championship. It's interesting to me that Wesley So plays 18 queen c3 instead of 18 c5 which is something he already played to good effect in that game i just showed you briefly black plays 18 knight b7 magnus avoids the complexities of 18 knight takes d4 for instance if he had played 18 knight takes d4 and 19 queen takes a5 and 19 c5 are alternative paths to the same possibility 19 queen takes a5 19, knight c2, 20 c5, bishop e5, 21, bishop c4, check, bishop e6, 22, bishop g5, queen takes g5, and 23, bishop takes e6, check, is very sharp. And like I said, after 18, knight takes d4, white could also play 19 c5, bishop e5, queen takes a5, knight c2, bishop c4 check, bishop e6, bishop g5, queen takes g5, and bishop takes e6 check, the very same position. Back to our actual game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen has just played 18, knight b7, 19 c5, Wesley So is down in development, but the boss of space on the queen side. 19, bishop c7, 20, b4, and then 20, a5, Magnus strike back to undermine Wesley's spatial control on the queen side before white can develop with ease. Had Magnus tried 20, knight b to d8, uh, Wesley could have played bishop c4, knight f7, knight d2, knight e to g5, and 23, bishop b2, and again, white has ideal piece coordination. But Magnus certainly wouldn't want to have played, for instance, uh, 20 knight takes d4, because it gives white easy development and dangerous piece coordination. For instance, after 21 bishop e2, rook d8, bishop c4 check, king f8, 23 knight d2. And everyone would prefer the white pieces here. 20 queen takes d4 is likewise a mistake. After 21, queen takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop c4, check, knight e6, bishop takes e6, check, bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, and white is ahead material with a nice endgame looming. So Magnus played 20, a5, and Wesley plays 21, b5, to which Magnus Carlsen responds with 21, queen takes d4. Of course, 21 cx b5 is another possibility with play continuing something like bishop takes b5, queen h4, h3, a4, knight d2, queen f6, rook b1, knight b takes c5, bishop a3, bishop a5, 
queen g3, queen g6, queen takes g6, check, hx g6, dx c5, bishop takes d2, rook e2, bishop c3, bishop c4, rook e8, rook b6, and king f7. But Magnus Carlsen played 21, queen takes d4. And white responds with 22, queen takes d4. A slight improvement would be playing bishop c4 immediately. For instance, bishop c4, queen takes c3, 23, knight takes c3, knight takes c5, bishop a3, knight e4, bishop takes f8, king takes f8, knight takes e4, fx e4, and 27, bx c6. White would be a full point ahead, and black's pieces lack good coordination. Of course, after 22 bishop c4, black could play 22 queen f6, bishop b2, queen takes c3, knight takes c3, knight takes c5, bishop a3, knight e4, knight takes e4, fx e4, bishop takes f8, king takes f8, and 28 bishop takes c6. Or, after 22 bishop c4, Black could play rook d8, b6, bishop b8, bishop b2, queen takes c3, knight takes c3, knight takes c5. Similar to the other variations, but with one big difference. There is no rook on f8 to pin the knight on c5 to. I would prefer to be white because of the nicely coordinated pieces, but black seems to be okay here as well. Play could continue. 26 b7, bishop takes b7, 27 bishop takes e6, check, knight takes e6, rook takes e6, rook d2, 29 rook e2, rook takes e2, 30 knight takes e2, c5, and black has the strong bishop pair but no immediate access to his rook, and all four of his pawns are isolated. Interesting stuff. I went through those variations quickly. If you want to study them at a more leisurely pace, I will post all this information on dailychessmusings.com. So back to Wesley So's move of 22 queen takes d4. Magnus Carlsen plays 22 knight takes d4, 23 bishop c4 check. Both king g7 and king h8 would lose because of bishop b2. 23, bishop e6. So Magnus wisely interposes the check with his bishop. And let me go ahead and take a few seconds to show you the uh, king g7, king h8 ideas. So if after 23, bishop c4 check, um, if Magnus would have played king g7, then 24, bishop b2, rook d8, and rook e7 check is miserable for black. Similarly, if black had played 23 king h8, bishop b2, rook d8, knight a3, knight takes c5, rook a to d1, knight e6, rook takes e6, bishop takes e6, rook takes d4, rook takes d4, bishop takes d4, check, king g8, 30, bishop takes e6, check, king f8, b6, bishop d6, 32, knight c4, c5, 33, bishop c3, rook d8, 34, f3. So there's no back rank mate. 34, bishop b8, 35, bishop takes f5, a4, bishop c2, king e7, 37, bishop takes a4, king e6, 38, bishop b3, king d7, 39, a4, king c6, 40, a5, king b7, 41, knight e5, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, rook d7, 43, bishop c4, Rook d1, check, king f2, rook b1, f4, king c6, f5, rook b4, f6, rook takes c4, 48, f7, rook c2, check, 49, king e3, and black's position would be hopeless. Again, I will post that complete uh, variation on dailychessmusings.com. So back to our actual game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. After 23 bishop c4, Magnus played the brilliant and necessary 23 bishop e6. Wesley So plays 24 bishop takes e6 check. Knight takes e6. 25 rook takes e6. Magnus Carlsen may be temporarily down a pawn, but all of his pieces are in the game. 25 knight takes c5. Wesley So's piece placement is bad. 
The rook he has developed is under threat of capture, and he still has a rook on a1, knight on b1, and bishop on c1. 26, rook e2. Wesley must spend time to save his rook rather than developing a new piece. 26, rook f e8. Magnus threatens the rook again, keeping the initiative. 27, knight c3. Developing the knight to c3 is the obvious choice here, as it develops a piece and defends the rook on e2. 27, rook takes e8 is an obvious mistake as it trades off white's only developed piece and allows black to improve his a8 rook with the threat of mate. So after Wesley So plays 27, knight c3, 27, cx, b5, Magnus regains his pawn and now has a dangerous two-on-one pawn majority on the queen side. 28, bishop e3, Wesley So develops another piece with a threat. 28, bishop e5. The best way to threaten the knight on c3. I say the best as 28, b4 is not as good as bishop to e5 and could lead to a draw. 29, knight d5, bishop e5, rook a to e1, knight d3, 31, rook d1, knight b2, rook d to e1, and knight to d3. And the players can have a threefold repetition draw. But Magnus isn't looking to draw here, so he played 28, bishop e5. 29, bishop takes c5. 29, rook c1 is interesting. And then knight d3, and then 30, rook d1. Because certainly not 30, rook c to c2, because f4, and white is in serious trouble. And this game is chock full of so many pitfalls that the players avoided with extreme accuracy and professionalism. So back to 21, bishop takes c5, 29, bishop takes c3, 30, rook takes e8, check, rook takes e8. And now with less pieces on the board, that two-on-one queen side pawn majority of Magnus's seems extra menacing. 31, rook b1, b4. 32, king f1, rook e5, 33, bishop e3. And here, 33, bishop d6 is a possibility. Uh, play would continue with rook d5, bishop f4, a4, rook c1, b3, ax, b3, ax, b3, rook takes c3, b2, rook b3, rook d1, king e2, b1, promotes to a queen. 40, rook takes b1, rook takes b1. And white seems to have better chances at a draw with black having no pass pawns on the queen side. But Wesley So played 33 bishop e3 instead of 33 bishop d6. And Magnus played 33 a4. And his pawn majority is even more menacing. 34 rook c1. And similar to the last idea, had Wesley So played 34, rook d1 here, um, b3, ax, b3, ax, b3, bishop d2, rook d5, king e2, b2, bishop takes c3, rook takes d1, bishop takes b2, rook b1, bishop d4, king f7, h3, king e6, g3, rook h1, h4, king d5, 44, bishop c3, rook b1. And again, despite the deficit in material, white must have better drawing chances when black does not have the pass pawns on the queen side. And these last two variations are definitely worth playing out on the chessboard to further your understanding of these kinds of endgames. You can find all this analysis posted in the blog section at dailychessmusings.com. But back to our game. Wesley played 34, rook c1. 34 a3. Magnus is threatening to play b3, which in turn threatens to create a pass pawn for black on a2. 35 g3. Stopping Magnus from playing b3 immediately. And certainly not the immediate 35 king e2, because it may look like the king is en route to b3, but this idea fails miserably to a simple tactic of 35 f4 alternatively 35 rook c2 magnus would have rook to b5 king e2 
b3, ax b3, rook takes b3, bishop d2, bishop d4, rook c8, king f7, rook a8, getting the rook behind the passed pawn, h5, rook a6, h4, and 42 g3. Would have been a viable defensive option for white. Also down the path of 35 rook c2, and then rook b5, white could try 36 bishop d2, which looks like it might be good enough to draw. Play might continue. 36 bishop e5, rook to c8 check, king f7, rook a8, bishop c3, 39 rook a7 check, king e6, 40 rook to a6 check, king d5, king e2, b3, 42 ax b3, bishop takes d2, 43, king takes d2, rook takes b3. And now white's king is unable to join the fight on the queen side while simultaneously protecting its second rank pawns on the king side. 44, h4. I like playing h4 here to make sure it is preserved and black doesn't get a pass pawn on the h file as well. 44, king c4. But now black's king is in position to cause harm. King c1 h5, 46, rook a4, check, king c3, rook a8, f4, rook a6, king d3, rook a4, king e2, 50, king c2, and rook b2, check. Would be good enough for black to win as the white pawns on the king side are sure to fall. So I'm playing through a lot of different variations and sub variations because this is a complicated end game and all of this analysis is available on dailychessmusings.com in the blog section so that you can peruse through at your own pace and gain a little bit more understanding of these types of end game scenarios. So Magnus played 34a3 and Wesley played 35g3. 35 rook b5 because b3 doesn't work for after. 36 rook takes c3 b2. 37 rook b3 prevents the b2 pawn from promoting, so white is just a bishop ahead. And after 35 b3, rook takes c3, if black tries bx a2, white can simply play rook takes a3, and that's also losing for black. Which is why Magnus Carlsen played 35 rook to b5. 36 rook c2. b3. 37 ax b3. Because 37 rook takes c3 would be a super greedy blunder. As after 37 b2, black gets a queen. So back to the actual game after 37 ax b3. Magnus Carlsen plays rook takes b3, and then 38 king g2. The only way to activate the king as 38 king e2 allows black to pin white's rook to the king with devastating effect. Kapow. So after 38 king g2, 38 king f7, the king must be active in the endgame. 39 bishop d2. 39 bishop c5 doesn't work out well for white because 39 bishop b2, 40 bishop takes a3, and bishop takes a3. Looks good for black. So Wesley So played 39 bishop d2, and then Carlson played 39 bishop e5, to which Wesley So played 40 bishop f4. And this is technically a mistake, but I'm not sure 40 bishop c1 is actually any better because... After 40, bishop c1, bishop b2, h3, leaving the rook and bishop where they are, so black cannot play a2 and then a1. King e6, rook c8, putting the rook in position to move behind the pass pawn. 42, king d5. But black's king is so much more active than white's and can easily pivot to the king or queen side, depending on what white does. 43, g4 fx g4 44 hx g4 white manufactures his own pass pawn 44 king e4 but as i alluded to earlier black's king can easily reach the most important squares 45 rook c5 king d3 to support placing black's rook on c3 after which white's best move would be to resign because 
46, rook c8, rook c3, 47, bishop takes b2, ax b2, 48, rook b8, king c2, 49, f3, b1 promotes to a queen, rook takes b1, and king takes b1. Fun stuff and worth examining. But back to our game. 40 bishop f4 is what Wesley so played. And Magnus plays 40 bishop takes f4. This is winning, and so was 40 rook b2. As rook c4 a2, bishop takes e5, a1, promotes to a queen, rook c7, check, king g6. Bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, rook c6, king h5, rook c5, queen b7, check, f3, king g6, rook c2, queen d5, king f2, and 49, king g5, where the queen versus rook endgame is also winning. But back to our actual game. Magnus Carlsen played 40, bishop takes f4, 41, gx f4, rook b7, in route to a7. 42, rook a7. Rooks belong behind past pawns. Magnus's rook is in the ideal position. Wesley's is not. 43, king g3. Wesley's king moves up a rank, but what can it actually accomplish? Not much, since Magnus's past pawn is clear on the other side of the board, and black would have to play very impractically for white to obtain any prospects on the king side. Of course, 43, king f3 is another try for white. But after king e6, king e3, king d5, king d3, rook a4, king c3, rook takes f4, king b3, rook f3, check, and 48, king b4. Black is easily winning. So Wesley So chose 43, king g3. And then 43, rook a4. Black's rook is threatening f4 while remaining behind the passed pawn. 44, king h4. Wesley So offers Magnus f4 with a check. 44, king g6. But the pawn on f4 isn't going anywhere, and capturing it would allow white's king to complicate things by moving to g5. 45, king g3. King f6. 46, h3. 46, h5. Which is a splendid move, as 46, king d6, is more accurate to computer analysis, but allows white more counterplay. For instance, 47, king h4, king d5, king g5, king c4. And black should still win, but the situation is messy. So I definitely prefer Magnus's technique using 46, h5. Part of good technique in endgames, a big part of good technique in endgames, is shutting down your opponent's counterplay. And Magnus Carlsen is looking to do just that with 46, h5. King h4, king g6, king g3, 48, king g7. Taking a moment to triangulate to claim opposition on the king's side after white plays king h4. However, Wesley played 49, king f3. Had he played king h4, Magnus would have played king h6, defending h5, and taking opposition. Now white must play king g3 or lose f4 to the rook. King g3, king g6, king f3, h4. There is that endgame technique. h4 seals off white's king from threatening the h-pawn. 52, king e3, king f6, king d3. Rook takes f4 because white's a3 is guarded by a skewer. See, if 54 rook takes a3, then black would have rook f3 check, king d2, and rook takes a3. Bye bye, rook. But Wesley played 49 king f3, and Magnus plays 49 h4. Again, just good technique here, sealing the king off from creating any counterplay on the king's side flank. 50 king to e2, king f6, 51 king d1, king e6, 52 king c1. King d5, 53 king b1, and 53 king d1 wouldn't be any better. White would also lose if they try to pivot back to defend the king's side pawns because king e4, king e2, king takes f4, bam, king f1, king e4, king e2, rook to a8, f3, check, king f4, king f2, rook to a4, king g2, king e3, f4, king takes f4, 61 king f2, Rook a8, king g2, 
King e3, rook to a1, a2, rook to e1, king d4, and white could play rook f1, but Magnus would promote the a pawn on the next move regardless. So as Liso played 53, king b1, the handwriting's on the wall, 53, king e4, 54, rook d2. Wesley is able to reactivate the rook now that the king is in position to stop the a-pawn from promoting, but it's too late. 54, king f3. Because Magnus's king is en route to create a pass pawn on the opposite flank as well. 55, king a2. And 55, king g2. Wesley So resigns here as he will not be able to stop Magnus Carlsen from manufacturing a passed pawn on the king's side as well. For example, if rook d3 to defend h3, rook takes f4, and white can't play, king captures a3 because rook f3 would force a trade of rooks, and Magnus Carlsen would easily win white's king side pawns as then they cannot be defended. Likewise, white wouldn't be able to play 57, rook takes a3, because after rook takes f2 check, king b1, f4, and h3 will fall as well after black plays rook f3. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive in the game Wesley So played against Magnus Carlsen on February 13th, 2021 in the Opera Euro Rapid Knockout. It was a real pleasure to see such top talent use the two knights defense, which is usually relegated to being played in youth chess events. However, as we've seen, there is still a lot of theory to be uncovered in the Italian structures and the two knights defense. The middle games that ensue are rich in tactics and pitfalls, and the beautiful endgame technique Magnus Carlsen used to defeat Wesley So is worthy of deep study. If you stuck around for the entire lesson, I hope you found this game to be as inspiring as I did, and my analysis of it to be enlightening. Remember, all the talking points that I use during this game are available for you to read through at your own pace on dailychessmusings.com in the Chess Musings blog section. And with that, I bid you adieu until next time. My name is Chris Torres, and this has been a deep look at the game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen, played on February 13th, 2021, in the Opera Euro Rapid Knockout. Thanks for joining me today, and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank <laughs> you.